Hey everybody, Jimmy with the Triple C Collective and Colin. And we are ready to bring you season three, episode 10, uh, Identity, Identity Crisis. crisis. Uh, and this is a great episode, man. This was, this was a quick one, but like it, 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 it moved. Yeah. Oh yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah know, the, like, pace, the pacing on, uh, these two episodes were pretty great. Yeah. Cause uh, we, we did, we were talking about it before together. the show. Um, They're not necessarily connected in the same way that you'd expect two episodes to be released connect be connected but there there is definitely like it's just like pace pacing wise they're both pretty uh yeah. pretty quick and, and and to the point but yeah anyway so we start off the episode with like a at some like it's a very beautiful planet i have to admit i loved this planet like the way it had like these like islands in the sky almost yeah. and they're, they're it, it, they're at some um like shop at some vendor and there's a there's a kid and his mom and they're walking around and he's he's trying to grab a toy and he uses the force and you know how that goes right now using the force yeah. isn't really re, really isn't really something people want want to be seeing but uh he he breaks a vase and and the, the crowd sees but it seems like most of them are pretty knowingly not going to say anything. They they know what's going what's going on, but they don't want to say. Well, anything. it it seems like that this place, this village, has been almost accustomed yeah. to like force users of some kind, or at least the empire, the negative effects of the empire, right? Or yeah. like the empire just like straight up taking people, like just kidnapping and abducting people and whatnot. Yeah, so either way, there the, the, most of the crowd seems to be. Eh, right. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see a thing. Nothing. Nothing happened to nobody. But right. then we got the one snitch. We get the one rat in the crowd. Right. right. You get the one snitch. But you do get that one couple that's like, don't say things like that. Like, you know, that's like dangerous for them yeah. and whatnot. Like knowing that, like, and the dude's just being offhand. He's not like this guy's got like force power or anything. He's just like, I always knew that kid was weird. And like, you yeah, know, yeah. it's not anything like super like mean or telling or anything, but it's like, it's like, if you know, you know, and well, like people knew. <laughs> yeah. So he calls, uh, calls a class one bounty hunter, which we've heard in the previous episodes have been looking for force sensitives everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So this is like clearly before Imperial, uh, I mean, um, the, uh, the, Darth Vader's what do they call the uh the 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 guys who sort search for the 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 Jedi they're uh the inquisitors? inquisitors yeah the inquisitors aren't as in use right now it seems like they're right. using bounty hunters more but to to be fair Vader always uses bounty hunters he's he's always surrounded by his crew of bounty hunters mm -hmm. in the later movies but yeah so the class 1 bounty hunters are going after four sensitives now or M count people with high m counts um and yeah so that that's out there but we go back to mount tantus now and dr hemlock's like kind of just like creepily looking over his his secret stuff you know mm -hmm. behind the red door <laughs> he's just There's, being so weird like yeah, he's always weird. like hemlock is so creepy his yeah, voice is creepy like the the voice actor needs to win like an Emmy or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like he's great. Like he's absolutely just unnerving. And like he is like super creepy in this episode too. Like, and we don't get like a lot of him because like a lot of it again is just like animation of like him just giving right. weird looks and stuff, like you know, menacing looks. But again, he rep that. he represents the Empire's like forebodingness very well. Like mm -hmm. if, if he's like kind of like a little snapshot of what the empire could be like, um, I'm starting to, you know, she not, not that she didn't see it before, but she's definitely like afraid of him. And, uh, she, you can tell why, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah, so, so we're back in, we're back on Tantus and we're back in Hemlock and is talking to Emery basically. And Emery's like, uh, can I get a new job? <laughs> can I get a raise? <laughs> like, uh, now it's says kind of, you know, taking taking a break so can we can we maybe maybe i can get that that position and like dog you're complaining about like slow down and like not getting the same kind of results out of the lab and stuff and it's like of course not do, do, do you trust no. me right do you trust me which is a great question from emery mm -hmm. to hemlock 
Like, it's really a great question of being like, like, do you actually trust me? Or do you look at me the same way that you looked at Nala Singh? Like yeah. someone who's like really handy and useful, but mm, I don't know if yeah, they're exactly. on my side. I don't know. The if trust they're... thing is, is definitely going to lead into something because yeah, it, but he does, he agrees. He's like, Oh yeah, that's probably a good idea to get a new chief scientist on this. So yeah, you go ahead. I'm going to show you the project necromancer that we're working on here. Um, right away he's just like gets into it he's like finally kind of just shows her what's behind the door you know what's behind what's what all the secrets have been about i mean we've literally been waiting all season for this right. moment of like getting the peek behind the curtain what is project necromancer what does it all mean and with all these like monsters we keep seeing and stuff you never know what's going to be behind those doors and like so right. like i'm not showing her and you know she's ready to see specimens you know yeah like specimen. some kind of specimen and, and it's just turns out to be three kids with high m counts you know what i mean and it's yeah it's three like, younglings basically yeah like and he she's immediately like oof, oof. <laughs> you could tell like immediately she's like this isn't what i thought it was going to be but you know she's she's, she's still playing a role because she's always been uh seemingly one to just to stick by her by hemlock's orders or whatever mm-hmm so uh, yeah, Hemlock just kind of is like, don't look at these. They're not. They're just specimens. Don't don't get too attached. Don't even. They're you know, assets. They're assets exactly. And then Hemlock like it kind of explains why they need Omega and like that the fact that they uh, she's a perfect binding. Uh, she, her blood is the perfect binder for that for this project. Mm-hmm. And uh, as Emery starts like acclimating, she kind of starts introducing herself to one of the kids, and Hemlock's like, nope, don't again whoa, whoa. What are we doing here? <laughs> let's slow your roll here a little bit a little bit let's slow down here you don't want any no personal connections now with it these is... uh with these assets like you want to limit all of that all personal interaction and everything you know remember they're scientific assets yeah which is Nothing always more. funny to me because they've uh, i mean the dark side users have always been like you know at least we allow like uh love and stuff whatever but clearly it's the passion isn't what love is it's passion that's way different and uh and it just shows you that that how isolating the umpire is like they can't even allow kids to be kids uh they can't even allow people that are like nurses necessarily to get connected to these kids um and it's just it's just sad it's just gross and 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 it's weird to see uh Emery kind of be touched by it. Uh, clearly, something she's not feeling it. Oh yeah, like during this whole process, like there's stuff like going off in Emery's head, being like, "Hmm, hmm, yeah, this, yeah." And and she listen, she grew up a clone, right? So she right. didn't have maybe the worst experience. She's seen like she doesn't probably think Hemlock's like uh, a good person, like a good person, but she, she seems to respect him a lot, whatever. Right. And, uh, she doesn't seem to have had the worst time, put it that way. Absolutely. She might have skated I, a little more. If we're being honest, I really think that Emery thought the only like, got it. The only like kid that Hemlock was like looking to experiment on was Omega because she was a clone and everything like that. Um, that's what that like from all of this, that's truly like my understanding of like it is that it seemed that because like in the end, like Emery, we also found out is like a clone of Omega too as, as well. Yeah, so that's why yeah, they're like he, sisters and stuff. So like, you yeah. know, um why like like clearly it's the binder we know that like that's the thing the m count and everything that's why that's what makes omega more special in that sense than like emery but it's like no well, yeah she's an actual clone like basically like a hundred percent almost a hundred percent clone of you know yeah where it's like like boba fett she's literally boba fett's the alpha she's the omega right so yeah um yeah it's very interesting and i almost wonder if we're gonna see boba fett by the end of the series but uh I mean, they've been leading to Cad Bane, and we know they've had their run-ins at this point. You know, Boba ends up taking them out in the Book of Boba Fett. So uh, they definitely should have some more run-ins. That would be dope to see. But, yeah, they, like you said, it's just um, Emery is a clone herself, of, and she's Omega's sister, basically. 
and she um she's just not uh she didn't have the same experience as omega though right no, so right absolutely she kind of got tossed aside early and we'll see that when she you know talks mm-hmm. to Nala later but yeah anyway we see one of the kids kind of when hemlock leaves he's kind of star- his name's Jax. he's the green one who looks mm-hmm. like uh, beast boy <laughs> huh yeah, he looks like beast boy yeah yeah he uh he's kind of watching hemlock's moves and he sees like him enter the number well yeah he sees the code that's entered on the data pad and stuff so he's like kids like i just need a data pad that's all i need yeah so he's ready um, to get out he's ready to escape like clearly that i think that was what i was getting at is that emery's one difference is she's never had the um the gall to escape like she's never been uh she's kind of looks at omega like why are you always like fighting against everything? Why aren't you kind of just like, why don't you acclimate? Like I didn't. And it's like mm-hmm. that, that maybe that uh, spark of rebellion just that hasn't, you know, been there for Emery. But yeah, anyway, so we get back to the force sensitive kid and his mom, Cad Bane's walking in. And whose spurs are they yeah, that we hear? Yeah, exactly. So Is we, that Cad Bane? Yeah. Man, it's, it's always awesome seeing Cad Bane show up in animation. Yeah, so he should, he finally he goes up and like like I said, it's just another hint towards hopefully that the that Boba Fett's showing up, like who would be around, you know, Omega's age or whatever. Right, like he, I mean, Boba Fett's around. Boba Fett ends up with, you know, as we've already said, like ends up with like Cad Bane and everything, and like running with him and everything. So like, it would be crazy to see to not have him show up here. It would be interesting to see if they like and bad batch with like boba meeting up with omega and then then them going off somewhere and yeah but i i don't know if they'd, they'd be i don't know if they'd get along right now right Boba's still deep he's about to go super rad right like he's about to work with vader for forever so um yeah he's not in his uh redemption arc yet so yeah. like i think that if anything they'd fight which would be interesting. Oh, maybe well, he, might he, have maybe, some he soft maybe he comes to try and collect the debt. Yeah, maybe he, he's probably become trying to become a class one at this point. So yeah, anyway, uh, so we see that, and Cad Bane shows up, and he uh, stuns the mom uh, and snatches up the kid, and his droid like quickly checks the blood to confirm that the M counts there, and they realize it is, so they take they kidnap this kid. Yeah, they, they came at this kid, and this is like it's like they've been doing across the galaxy, apparently, you know. So this isn't something crazy. New. Like that was wild to see. Mm-hmm. I also love on how they totally shame the dude who, uh, who uh, like gave the tip or whatever about it, and how like Cad Bane just like tosses him. Like yeah, just Cad tosses. Bane at the end of the day, he's like, got his own moral code, and he's just like, "You're a scumbag." Like. It, He'll yeah, do something like, similar later to uh to Emery when she asks a question. Like he he does like have this presence of mind that like mm-hmm. I'm only acting on what I what the information I have. So you know, right? Be careful. He's yeah. just he's such a good character. Um and the, so yeah, everything about this scene, like the whole taking of the kid, the stunning of the mom, and then like, just the tossing of it was like beautiful, classic Cad Bane stuff. Uh. I also love then we cut back to Tannis and yep. the the vault. We get uh where you get the introduction to like uh SP what fifty four, who's the little like red yeah. girl. So um, she finally she, gives her name. Yeah, she's Eva. Uh yeah, yeah Eva and Emery give each other like, you know, they exchange names finally. And Eva's um, kinda like uh uh, Nala say said she was gonna tell me when I was gonna get out of here and be able to go home. Uh, are you? Can you hook me up with that information? And Emery's like, "Yeah, I got you." Yeah. <laughs> Again, kind of talking at her heartstrings, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, because because she, she knows she she's lying right now. Like clearly, yeah. she knows there is yeah. no Emery's game. lying. But now it almost seems like too like Emery almost has the had the choice to kind of stay here and be here mm-hmm. and maybe that's like what emory is really seeing is that like maybe it really wasn't so much of a choice but she's always thought it was like you know like here you go we just yeah. got you here and like we brought you here we we did this we did that we did that for you so now you're gonna stay here with us right 
Yeah. She's seeing the overall, uh, the, the overall, uh, plans that have been going on behind her back have been, you know, again, mm-hmm. just experimenting on children is maybe one of the worst things you could do as a, as a society. So she's, she's kind of in the middle of it now. She doesn't know what else to do. So she's just doing her job like usual. Mm-hmm. And she gets confronted with these moments of humanity in between. And it, it's finally like, it's yeah. finally kicking in, you know, and Omega was her big point, I think of contention for her because they're each other. They are the same like being. So, um yeah she's starting to get that spark i think right uh, but but it, but it's not going to come before uh that kid jacks tries to escape when they're walking yep. all together and uh yeah he tries to escape he gets a data pad he starts running away but he's pretty data pads all red they like lock him out and stuff like it's like almost it's a simple immediate. little procedure that they were expecting and everything and uh yeah that's not he didn't really have a chance and then all of a sudden the clone commandos come in and and everybody's like it's fine whatever he's not going anywhere like don't do anything and they stun him they stun the kid anyway again yeah. it's showing the just like inhumanity of everything going on at this point like clones shooting other clones like just for the empire's sake for they don't even know what um and then we get a scene with young ava again just kind of like are they going to punish him? You know, and Emery reassures. And at this point, I don't think she's lying. She's just like, no, I don't, we're not going to do anything. Like, there's no point. Yeah. Like, like we stunned him. He's done. Like, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah, I like, think like in Emery, like what Emery doesn't know is that there is a standard operating procedures here for how they run things here. And she does not know that. Yeah. So under her, under what she would have expected, they neutralized the kid, the kids down, like, all all good like right. like all quiet right. as the far as i'm the chief engineer here so like nothing, <clears throat> nothing's gonna happen so i got this um and so emory's clearly not comfortable with what's going on she goes and sees nala say in her cell <laughs> and kind of confronts her about her own past right right like is like uh you discarded me like what was that all about you know and it was more more about nala say basically saying like you didn't need as much protection yeah. It's, say Omega, because look at what's happening right now. <laughs> uh, I thought you would basically be fine, and and uh, you got to like look after those who are, you know. She basically uses this as a moment to be like, you got to, you the Empire doesn't care. You you have to care about these kids. Like you you see, just like I cared about Omega. You know, like just like mm-hmm. I was caring about these kids before all this happened. I was like kind of the. Uh, I was kind of the only thing that had, they had going for him. Uh, so maybe you should take that role over too. Not just the role that he gave you. Yeah. Not just like the lackey role for like Hemlock and like all of that, like do some real good here. Like, yeah. And which like, eventually is probably going to put her at odds with Hemlock. Right. But oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So we get her leaving. She's like in the hall. And Hemlock, uh, Hemlock starts talking to Emery about a new specimen that just arrived, and that uh, she, and she, she, he's with Commander Scorch, and he's like, uh, she's like asking to go with him to see the new specimen because Hemlock's got a meeting with Governor Tarkin, which mm-hmm. is funny. We'll see. And uh, she, he's like, yeah, whatever. I got this meeting. You go. You go get the new speed. Yeah, well, because, like, Emery's like, no, 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 no. I want to go because I want to ensure. Because now that she's realizing that it's probably another kid, like, yeah. she's not dumb at this point. Like, she's no longer, like, like that glass has been shattered. So she's like, right. well, shit, if they're, if they're just stealing up kids now, which is so messed up, like, then I am going to go there and I'm going to do what Nala Say said. I'm going to at least try and protect these kids to a certain, like, to a degree of, like, some sort of safety, because she's seen how the clone commandos treat them. Yeah. Or, like, uh, the trooper commandos and all that stuff. Yeah. They don't, they don't care at all. Yeah. They're they're just stunning. They would kill one of those. And with Jax just trying to escape, it's probably not looking good for him, considering they have a new subject that they could probably right. get rid of the old one with. But anyway, so, she, yeah, she's, she's going to meet him, and this is when we get our meeting with Hemlock and Governor Tarkin over the hologram, who's kind of just pissed off that Hemlock's getting so much money. Uh, mm-hmm. 
for the secret project and he won't share anything with Tarkin about it. And right. we've seen this before with Tarkin, who, like he doesn't like uh, sharing the glory or sharing the, the uh, anything. He with, wants all the credit. He, yeah, he wants all the credit. We've seen it in Rogue One. We've seen it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? We've seen it with Thrawn, uh, uh, him and Thrawn. We've, so yeah, he's just not, he doesn't love that Hemlock's kind of got this like seeker relationship with the Emperor and, just, and all that. So he's just annoyed, I think, that 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 he's getting so much money, and when he could use all this money for his for his his project, which you know turns out to be the Death Star, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so then after the Tarkin call, though, uh, Emery or not Emery Hemlock calls then the Shadow Clone, right? That is <laughs> been, Tuck. that yeah yeah. Has been, uh, shadow tech did you say <laughs> yeah <laughs> um that's been out on the hunt for the bad batch which like, he, very, like he's, he could be this dude is like seemingly uh just sing, single-mindedly going after the bad batch he seems to be you know he seems to be a success as far as uh hemlock shadow troopers go if if, if crosshair was kind of the failure this this one seems to be doing really well and he kind of says uh at this moment he kind of gives away that he might have tortured Sid <laughs> to get some information out of her. He's mm-hmm. like a female Trandoshan uh, gave me some information about a pirate, you know, which a female Trandoshan, she, Sid would have been that. Fits fits pretty close into that. Right. And his friend was Fee, who we find out is the pirate he's talking about. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to be the end of Sid, and that's all we hear of her again. But yeah, that's definitely a little slight nod at what's going on, right? Um, so we then we get Emery and uh meeting with Cad Bane, and Cad Bane and his droid are kind of just waiting, they're coming off their jet uh ship, and uh, Emery immediately tries to get in some answers out of him, but <laughs> this is another moment where Cad Bane's kind of just like, what What's up? Uh, like uh, it seems like you have something else going on here. You should probably keep that locked up because yeah, if like, I could read that, uh, yeah, eventually people might read into under- that or something yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah, um, or you might be giving away a little bit more than you mean to. Yeah, um, which is like it's very stuff that Hemlock's kind of having a hard time seeing right now. Like that, that she is disillusioned. Uh, yeah. Cad Bane seemingly immediately realizes she's disillusioned, it, but you know, kind of brushes past it and gives her advice like, "You better brush up on on this if you're gonna do this." Yeah. Again, just kind of pointing at Cad Bane having his own just weird singular like focus. Like he's got the Cad Bane. Just wants his money and yeah. his power and his his respect. It, I mean, like, it all revolves around Cad Bane for Cad yeah. Bane. That's that's yeah. all it really is. Um, and like, so that whole interaction though is like so great because like you almost feel like at some point, Cat like Bane's just gonna like go off and like just gonna be like pop 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 and take and take it all back. <laughs> yeah. um, you almost hope he does <laughs> at some point that you're like, no, don't let this, don't let this little like baby get like brought up by like the empire and stuff yeah. right now like uh, cat doesn't cool. care someone else might though right. um, yeah cat just cat's in it for himself he i mean he clearly does what he has to um and yeah so we get emery back at work basically back and at he and kind stuff, of learns yeah. that uh-oh Jax has been in isolation for the past two rotations and for punishment and, clearly yeah. pissed off eva who's like wait emery lied because you said he wasn't gonna get punished and he isn't been here and i know he's getting punished and uh, it, it, it's a good moment because we we finally see that snap in emery as she goes back to her her barracks basically and and grabs the tuca doll that she took from the homemade one that that omega had in her mm-hmm. cell and she kept it. So clearly there already was this like um attachment, this this love finding a way type deal that, that she does have this sisterly connection with Omega already. And she kept that doll for her own reasons already. And she right. grabs it and she puts it outside of Eva's cell. 
and uh, as kind of a um, olive branch. And, you know, then the episode kind of ends there with her clearly not listening to Hemlock's advice about attachment. And, Absolutely not. Yeah. Not even a little bit. Um, it was such a the rebellious moment. spark has definitely been uh, lit within Emery. Yeah. She's Absolutely. definitely starting to... Tides are changing. Yeah. They are cha- changing. And uh, this episode was great, man. I really loved it. Yeah, it was really quick and fun. Uh, but like dark actually uh absolutely very dark episode uh but it was very well paced and 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 just kind of got to the point okay i agree um this was so fun um i actually i i just love that they actually gave us that peek behind the curtain out of like this whole episode was great but out of anything i'm just happy that like we saw what the vault was what the assets that they have been talking about these little kids and whatnot like it's crazy that um that's what all of this was like kids in cages basically being experimented on like so messed up um but like hey man star wars is a galaxy far far away that is able to open up all kinds of different things so i love that i love that they went there um that like they they showed us this and whatnot um this was a great episode they they they, they used to always uh go at the um like a jedi for taking younglings and blah 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 but it turns out they're going to do the same thing just worse right you know they're not going to give them a choice they're just going to take the kids which we you know we knew that was coming with the empire anyway but it was definitely something they used uh against the jedi in their rhetoric absolutely it was crazy but we're gonna go ahead and wrap up episode uh 10 of season three of the bad batch identity crisis i am jimmy with the triple c collective and this is colin and we want to thank you all for joining us please like and subscribe to our video and to our channel uh we hope you all stay safe and as always may the force be with you